Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have a three card card video for you today. So get comfy and let's get crafty. I needed to refurbish some of my cardstock supplies and Stampin' Up! was having their celebration. So I ordered enough cardstock to get a free stamp set. I might have a stamp set problem. <laughs> Anytime I get a new stamp set, it is my norm to stamp it all out and play with it and see how it works. That kind of files something in my brain and lets me know the next time I pull it out, hey, I did that one thing and it was awesome, or hey, I did that one thing and it didn't work too well. Sorry if there's a lot of background noise. My 12-year-old has decided that loading the dishwasher needs to be a really loud event. I don't know. The first thing I'm going to do with my otters is stamp them with um, some Copic Friendly ink. I will be using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black and stamp them on um, a Copic Friendly paper, obviously, since I'm using my markers. This is Nina's Solar White 80 Pound Card Stop. I am going to make three different style cards with this one stamp set today. I will create a one layer card. I will create an interactive card and I will create a scene card, which technically is also a one layer card today. Scene cards don't have to be one layer, but today it is. Um, this little otter here, I am stamping on a scrap of Nina because I'm going to cut it out. I also stamp um, the little party hat that comes in the stamp set. I think I edited that footage out probably because I was doing something else dumb in the middle of the video. <laughs> shaking my desk, but or my kids came in and were shaking my desk probably. They think they're hilarious that way. <laughs> Um, I am using my Misty Stamp Positioner to stamp all of these stamps, but because they are red rubber, I have pulled that little black um, mouse pad foam insert thing out. Um, and one more, one more otter. So there is an, an otter who looks like he's floating, an otter who looks like he's standing, and this little otter head popping out of the water. So we've got otters in all stages and variety. <laughs> it's kind of funny how... Um, in real life, I probably wouldn't think an otter was, you know, um, cute because they're not really, except that they hold hands when they float down the river, right? But when you turn them into a stamp, they're kind of cute. Same thing for like rats and mice. I don't like them, but in a stamp, they're kind of cute. Um, in order to create a couple of my cards, I need to do some masking. So I am going to place a piece of, um, this is Gina K Designs Masking Magic, I think, ma stamp masking paper. And I need to create a mask for the little otter head that's popping out of the water. And I need to create an, a mask for the um, standing otter. It took me a minute to remember which one I was doing. I probably should have stamped off first because the ink did smear just a little bit when I was cutting them out. So I had to be really careful and clean my hands really well so that I didn't get black smudges on my cards as I was moving forward. But I am going to go ahead and fussy cut these out with some sharp scissors on super fast speed because why not? I am editing my video and I think watching me cut at eight times normal speed is hilarious. The trick to fussy cutting is to turn the paper, not the scissors. And I usually remember that about halfway through my first image. So there you go. <laughs> now that I have these all cut out, I am going to adhere them to their card bases. So this card here is going to be my single layer card. I'm, it's going to be a clean and simple card, a little bit of color, and just the otter. This is going to be my scene card, and I will be creating the scenes using some stencils. You can also create scene cards using layers of cardstock, which is, to be fair, my norm. But I thought I would, you know, stretch my stretch my um, stretch my comfort zone just a little bit. So for my clean and simple or my one layer card, I'm just going to take a pe uh, blending brush. There we go, and a bluish. It's kind of a bluish greenish um, ink color, and I'm going to blend around my little otter so that it looks like he's just standing in a spotlight of color. He's just standing in a flood of this kind of aqua blue color. And I think it turned out perfect. Exactly what I wanted. I did start with the blending brush on the mask and move off the paper. That way I didn't get any little um, heavy marks from the blending brushes. 
So to create the layers on my scene card, I'm going to use this Honeybee Stamp stencil set. One of them is grassy edges and one of them is border edges. And it did take me a minute to remember exactly what I was doing um, because I'm ink blending and I'm trying to create the ocean or the, the river rather. I need to mask off the sky and use the edge to create the waves. And once I had one wave created, I decided I needed to create another, and then I needed to create another, and then I needed to create another because I can, and because I'm crazy. That's really the answer, because I'm crazy. <laughs> okay, now that I've got the water in, I need to put the hillside in behind the otter. He's not in an ocean. Otters are not typically in the ocean, I don't think. I think they're like rivers and ponds. So I am going to take the hillside to do the first slope of grass, and then I'm going to fidget with, and remember again how to use a stump stencil, and put some grassy hills in the background of this little otter card. And then we're about ready to move on to the Copic coloring. I did kind of blend it out just a little bit to eliminate some of that white space in the grass. Okay, for coloring the otters, this is also on super fast speed. I'm using my E3s. So the light is E30, E31, E33. The dark body fur is E35, E37, and E39. And I use the E49 for the nose. And this little otter looks like he's swimming upstream. He is holding a fish in his hand. And you can see that little party hat down in the bottom right hand corner. I will cut her color. Wow, that's not a word. Color. <laughs> the fish and the, and the party hat with some yellows. And because I'm cutting it out, I don't have to stay in the lines. Kind of my favorite thing about fussy cutting. You don't have to stay in the lines. Um, this otter, same thing. I'm using the same color blend with all of the otters. He does have a little bit of water splashing up. So once I have him cut out, I am going to take the, I think it was a B01 and color in those little water splashes. And it just adds a little bit more dimension. Um, I did end up going back in with an um, R20 and adding some cheeks into the otters because why not? Animals with pink cheeks look cute. And I did put a little bit of pink in their ears. This is when I realized that my E3s probably needed a little bit of re-inker. But gratefully, the same day I stocked up my cardstock, I also stocked up on some Copic reinkers. So I can go ahead and refill these markers. It did take a minute to get them to blend. I am going to fussy cut this party hat out and the otter out. I did forget to color in the puff, the little pom-pom on the party hat. So once I had it colored or cut out rather, I did grab a C1 and added a little bit of shadow just to the little, the palm there. I don't know if it made a difference, but in my mind, it made a difference. Once I have the otter and the birthday hat all cut out, I will go ahead and out, um, go over the outline of their bodies, of their shapes with a black marker. I just grabbed the first black marker in my drawer. This happens to be a fabric castell pit brush and it's a, a brush nib instead of a nib nib. Yeah. Just was the first one. If I'd grabbed a Sharpie, it would have been a Sharpie. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to making cards out of these card pieces. The first thing I want to do is trim those two panels down and I am going to use my A2 layer dies from Waffle Flowers so I can decide how much I want to cut off. I don't want this to be full size because I want a little bit of a frame with the card base. I am using the third largest, third from the largest die and I will tape it down with some paper washi tape. I would really be annoyed if I went to all the trouble of coloring and stenciling in the background on this panel and then the die moved and it cut crooked. That would make me crazy. That would make me crazy. I would have to completely start over. And I don't like starting over. Same thing, same die on this card. I'm going to tape it down and run it through my die cut machine. I do use this Spellbinders die cut machine and it works like a champ. I love it. I had to replace my cuddle bug last year. I'd had my cuddle bug for probably a decade and it finally, it finally went. And here's a funny thing. I haven't been able to actually throw it away yet. It's sitting in my garage. <laughs> There's this like angsty part of me that's worried about, I don't know. It doesn't cut, but I can't throw it away. Okay. For a card base, I have a light blue cardstock here. This is probably Stampin' Up! cardstock because 99% of the cardstock in my office is Stampin' Up! I like the colors and I get more paper, more paid pieces of cardstock per package. 
So I keep ordering from Stampin' Up. Plus, when I order enough, I get free stamps. So hey, I am going to adhere this card panel down with my ATG gun. And this is my not exactly one layer card because it's a panel on a card base, but it is a clean and simple card because there's not a lot going on with it. This card could become any card of any kind of card I wanted it to become. I did not put sentiments on any of these cards because I will when I'm ready to use them. All of the cards that I make end up getting mailed out for one reason or another. I will go ahead and put my piece of copy paper inside the card here. I do this on all my card bases except for the white ones um, because I think it finishes it off and gives me a nice place to write a message. Okay, next card is going to be my interactive card. The first step in the interactive card is to glue the hat onto the otter. Um, you, I could have, with a little bit of fancy um, stamping, stamped the hat onto the otter and cut it out in one piece. It's a little bit harder to do when you're using red rubber stamps than when you're using cling stamps. So I didn't, because glue works too. I did have to hold it there for a minute, but now I have this cute little otter with a party hat. I am going to create my card base next. This is a piece of uh, lighter blue or darker blue cardstock. Same thing, top folding US A2 size card, scored right there in the middle at five and a half. And I know I've said it a thousand times, but for some reason, somewhere along the line, a zillion years ago when I started making cards, okay, like 12 years ago, the top fold card became my favorite. Don't know why, don't know how, it just did. To create some layers, I have taken this piece of pattern paper from my stash. Um, this one might actually be stamping up too. And I have trimmed it down with a deckled edge die. I think it is a spellbinders die. And then I've taken a contrasting but coordinating piece of um, pattern paper and created another little deckled edge piece there in the middle. And I am going to attach this otter with an action wobbler. I love action wobblers. They're like the easiest way to make an interactive card and they're so fun and it makes your critter or whatever you put on them dance. So why not? Dancing otters? Heck yeah, why not? It is a little spring that has a plastic base and a plastic, well, a plastic base on each end. And you just adhere one end to your image and one end to your card base. And then it dances when you flick it. They're so cool. Sorry, my kids are sending me hand signals through my door, trying to make me laugh while I'm doing voiceovers. They're kind of crazy like that. I usually do voiceovers when they're not here, but we have a holiday weekend this weekend, so I just have to get her done. All right, so now I have the adhesive removed from my action wobbler, and I'm going to kind of center, but not really, this otter <laughs> onto the card. And you can see he dances. He's cute. He's got a, cuddling his little fishy, and he's dancing. Super cute. Um, I did forget before I adhered him that I wanted to go back in their eyes and add the whites and the darks back in. Um, I'm having to hold him down so the action wobbler doesn't move. Didn't do too bad of a job. I do have to be careful because the, the gel pen and the glaze pen I'm using to do the blacks of their eyes, they do take a minute to dry. And so really this should be the last thing you do except for when you're trying to put it on an action wobbler. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it turned out really well. I did use the white pen to add some highlights to his nose as well. And now I'm going to make it dance again because it's fun and I can because it's my video. <laughs> okay, the next card or the last card. Oh, sorry, first got to insert my copy paper. And then all that is left to do is put together the scene card because we have everything else put together. So tell me how you feel about cards. When you create cards, if you're a card maker, do you prefer um, clean and simple cards like this? Do you like action interactive cards? Do you like scene cards? Are you a traditional card maker with dies and stamped images? Or are you a coloring card maker? Or are you like some kind of hybrid? I feel like I'm kind of a hybrid. I do all of the things. I don't do all of them well or as well, but I like to do all of the things. Um, I really should have put a pin in the gel pen right here because I did add the whites and darks to his eyes and the highlights to his nose and realized I had not adhered it to a card base yet. So I will have to be very creative because I can't flip that panel over and put adhesive on the background. 
Ah, yeah, you can see my fingers going, dang, why'd you do that? Okay, here is another light blue card base I'm going to create for the third and final card in this video. I'm um, scored in the middle, fold it in half. I do like to use the bone folder to burnish that crease. It helps make it a nice clean crease and it prevents some of that buckling that sometimes occurs. I figured out that if I was careful, I could put the adhesive right on the card base. I just had to be careful not to go too far over or too far up and down because I did chop this panel down a bit. I'm just going to use the grid lines on my mat to try and line that up. From this angle, it looks like I did a terrible job. I'm sure I pulled it off and fixed it. <laughs> and I am going to go back in. Um, I, I guess this one needed a little bit more whites on his eyes. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe the highlights on his nose needed to be redone. He's having a nose job. <laughs> um, I might be a little punch drunk tonight. Wow. Um, let me know how you feel about new stamps. How do you get used to your new stamps? What is the first thing you do when you get a new craft item? Do you play with it right away? Do you research how it's supposed to use? Do you let it simmer and stew? I'd really like to hear your comments down below. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and my incessant rambling. I have a couple of photographs here for you to check out up close. And if you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch, as well as a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And if you know somebody who would like it, please feel free to share. Have a great day.